Welcome to part five of the fossil preparation series of Alice the Triceratops Skull. Today, we're gonna to be removing sediment from different areas on the right side of the skull. Let's go ahead and start with the maxilla. I'll go ahead and use this Dremel tool to remove the sandy matrix that's covering the bone. Since the bristles on this brush are made of plastic, they don't do any harm on the bone. So I like using this brush because I really want to remove as much of the sediment as possible from the surface of the bone. This allows me to identify the texture of the bone when I start microblasting it. Because when you're microblasting, you're removing a lot of sediment and sometimes some areas are harder than others and you could disrupt the texture of the bone, the surface of it, if you blast a little too hard. So it's important that, at least for me, to remove this sandy matrix, identify the little bits of shale that are also tightly attached to the bone, and it gives me pretty much a better uh, overview of exactly what I need to do and the delicate care that needs to be implemented in the various areas on the surface of the bone. Since Alice was close to the surface, there tend to be a couple roots that are growing throughout the skull. This is also prevalent on Skull X and some other fossils that we have. Once I use some compressed air to blow away the loose dirt that is within the cracks of the bone, I'll then use the surface intensive adhesive from Paleobond to uh, pretty much solidify these loose pieces on the maxilla. So we'll go ahead and move away from the maxilla and head over to an area where the post-orbital, so the area that's behind the eye, meets the squamosal. And the squamosal is sort of the side of the frill. When I'm securing with adhesive, I want to make sure that all of the dust and the particles of dirt are pretty well blown out of the cracks. So this is why I use compressed air. You want the glue to adhere to the surfaces of bone or the inner bone uh, that don't have any dust because it just makes a better grip for the glue. So what I'm using is the thickest adhesive in the Paleobond family. You use this stuff when you have to piece together very large pieces of bone. And in this case, it's perfect for a Triceratops skull. We'll move down a little bit lower to the infratemporal fenestra, which is this hole in the skull. And fenestrae are holes that are in the skull, of which uh, various muscles and tissue could pass through. Dinosaurs have temporal fenestrae because that is one of the main traits of diapsids, a large group that encompasses pretty much all reptiles. So that would be turtles, snakes, lizards, and crocodilians, and of course the avian dinosaurs, the birds.
I'm using the surface intensive adhesive again on the Finestra. Finestra has a lot of areas that are very fragmented along the rim, yet they're intact. But this adhesive is pretty critical in securing or providing the structural stability of the jugal area. I also want to use air and blow away as much sand matrix from the area as possible in order to put the adhesive down because I don't want to clump together the, uh, the sediment with the adhesive and create that hardened rock adhesive on top of the bone when I'm blasting. When I'm microblasting, I want to make sure that everything's removed and it makes it as easy as possible to clean the surface of the bone. Then I'll dig out more matrix from the inside of the fenestra and vacuum it up. A lot of people ask if I'm worried about vacuuming up fragments. I essentially place the vacuum a few centimeters above the dirt in order to vacuum up loose dirt. And plus I also have a good idea of where the bone is going to be located underneath the matrix that I'm removing. So that allows me to uh, better estimate uh, where it is and not suck up any bone fragments. Once we're done stabilizing the infratemporal fenestrae, we'll go ahead and move over to the nasal section. So there are these large gaps that I need to fill in with the thick adhesive. But because the thick adhesive will trickle down and it won't harden fast enough, I'll have to use this activator spray, which instantly hardens it.
Once the nasal area is more stabilized, we'll move over to the rostral slash premaxillary area. I'll use the thick adhesive again to provide similar structure. Now that these different regions of the skull are stabilized, I can begin microblasting. Stay tuned for more fossil preparation content, especially the next episode of our preparation series on Alice the Triceratops.